Novel immunotherapeutic approaches to treatment of ALL hold promise. Today we're going to discuss the ones that appear to be the most promising and how they be using our patients. So I'll turn to you, Dan, if you can tell us the role of immunotherapy today so, in ALL. Uh, I will summarize it. First thing, immunotherapy is in the forefront of drug or, or treatment development in ALL. And I will divide it into two aspects. One is cell therapy and the other one is antibody therapy. The only cell therapy to treat ALL that we had in the past was allogeneic transplantation. It's the only immunotherapy. You use donor cells and it was supposed to kill your own leukemia cells. What has happened, and Mark will talk a little bit and I will talk, is now we are able to use the patient's own cells and modify them to a, to a way that they can attack the leukemia cells. So you, it's the advantage is that you don't have the graft versus host disease that you have in a transplant. You're using autologous. And there's two ways to do it. One is binatunumab and the other one is the cow T cells. And we'll talk each one of them. The second thing, I think we touched on this a bit earlier, is antibody. And you can divide them into two uh, naked antibodies, which are not very active, uh, or, or conjugated antibody. But the blunatunumab, although it's an antibody, uh, by itself it doesn't work. Uh, so I include it as part of the cell therapy because it modifies the autologous T cells uh, to fight against. Uh, well, let's take, therapy. Mark, maybe you can explain to us the, what blunatunumab is and, and, and how is this unique? Yes, um, it's, a, it's a unique uh, construct. Uh, it's what's referred to as a bispecific T cell engaging antibody. So it takes the variable region of a monoclonal antibody that's directed against the uh, tumor target of choice, in this case, uh, a CD19, which is almost universally expressed on uh, B lineage uh, blast cells. And then it takes uh, the variable region of a an monoclonal antibody that's directed against CD3. So. Uh, uh, T cell uh, target and then links these two variable regions to create this bispecific uh, antibody that engages the, the T cells. Uh, and uh, so this was developed uh, a number of years ago. Uh, it's been used in a, a variety of uh, B lineage malignancies but uh, has shown the most uh, promise currently in uh, B lineage ALL. Uh, it's been uh, utilized in, in two settings. Uh, one is patients uh, who are in hematologic remission but still have evidence of minimal residual disease uh, by a variety of techniques. And in these patients, uh, in a small study, 80% of, of 20 patients were converted from MRD positivity to MRD negativity, and there's a larger trial confirming that data that's ongoing in Europe and I think is either finished or nearly finished, and hopefully we'll have results from that soon. And then it was carried on and utilized in the patients who have hematologic relapse or refractory disease, obviously a more difficult group of patients, but still showed promising results with CR rates in an initial pilot study in nearly 70 percent, and then in a higher, even higher risk group of patients, a larger number, 43% uh, achieved a complete uh, a remission or a complete remission without complete count, blood count recovery. And the vast majority of these patients were converted to MRD negativity. And it's actually on the basis of this larger study I just mentioned that led uh, just uh, here in early December, just prior to this ASH 2014 meeting to the FDA approval of blenitumumab for the treatment of uh, patients with relapse or refractory ALL. So this is very exciting, and this is actually the first time that the FDA actually approved it for acute leukemia, didn't take age into it. So as an adolescent, young adult, and pediatric advocate, I'm very excited because obviously there is data in pediatrics that Leah Gore is gonna present at this ASH 2014 meeting that also shows equivalency of what you see in an adult. But it's not the cure, right? It's been thought of as the bridge to transplant. Those are the terms that you keep hearing around this ASH meeting. So maybe when you, maybe tell me what you mean, what's meant by this bridge to transplant. Well, unfortunately, even though many of the patients that I just uh, talked about in this larger trial achieved MRD negativity, many of them still uh, relapsed. A number of these patients had already had a transplant, uh, so that's not terribly surprising, but 
it is not the cure, we don't think, uh, for many patients who have this hematologic relapse or are refractory. And so uh, if we can get those patients into remission and this agent is showing uh, a good response in, in that uh, setting, then we can take them on to transplant. So that's what the bridge refers to. We're uh, getting them into remission so that their uh, disease is under control, so we increase the chances of success or benefit with transplant. Now, a lot of us believe that as a drug is approved by the FDA, actually the hard work begins because the, the, the reason they approved it was in the relapse setting, and a lot of us believe it has a role in the front line. What's your thoughts on that? Well, we, we think and hope that that's the case. Uh, I'm uh, leading a trial on behalf of the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group, an intergroup trial where we're taking patients with B. linea JLL between the ages of 30 and 70, giving them induction chemotherapy, and if they achieve a conventional remission, then we're asking the patients to be randomized to get blinitumumab, plus go on to get consolidation and maintenance chemotherapy or a transplant or the other arm would be the control arm who would get the consolidation maintenance chemotherapy and or a transplant. And we want to look and see, because we know so many of these patients will still relapse after they achieve a remission, can blinitumumab keep more of them in remission and improve their, their survival? Because even patients that are MRD negative still can relapse uh, even in the frontline setting. And so we're hoping that blinitumumab will uh, improve the quality, depth of their remissions and their survival. Dan? So, so the, uh, yeah, so I think Blinatumab has is, is got a lot of promise. Uh, again, I, I mentioned it's, it's a new concept using autologous cells. The response rates are high, I mean, for these like this. Uh, the duration of response is, is only five months, but it, it's still good for ALL. It gives a little bit of time in those of response to get the transplant. Uh, I know, Mark, in your study, actually, as you mentioned, uh, you're going to look at those that are uh, uh, MRD positive or MRD negative, because the question could be, maybe that would be a better, uh, it will work better in a minimal residual disease setting when you don't have a lot of disease. Low disease burden. And maybe you don't need even a transplant. But I think, I think...